All right, guys, welcome back to another reaction video. My name is James. I'm Nobu. And today we are going to be watching another set of pitch meetings. So we're going to be watching the first half of the Harry Potter movie pitch meetings that we're going to do the second half uh, Monday, I think. So um, obviously Harry Potter has kind of a special place in this channel's heart because it was like one of the first things we did that blew up and had any attention. And we had literally never seen either the movies or read the books or anything. We did both. So it's really cool. Um, and pitch meetings has a very new and special place in my heart because it's just funny. <laughs> so I'm excited. Um, and yeah, all that being said, feel free to let us know what other pitch meetings you want us to watch. And let's just get into the ultimate Harry Potter pitch meeting compilation part one. All right, three, two, one. So you have a movie for me? <laughs> yes, sir, I do. So it's based on this fantasy the book voice series, just makes right? Me Which has sold a lot of copies. Oh, okay. Sorry, I got bored by the word book there for a second, but I'm listening now. <laughs> so what's money. this series about? Well, it's called Harry Potter, sir, and it's about this stand completely. And so this evil wizard Voldemort tried to kill Harry and his parents when he was a baby, okay. right? But not only did Harry survive, it seems like he killed Voldemort. Uh, retaliatory <laughs> babies are tight. Actually, it was like retaliatory protected by the power babies. of his dying mother love oh his mother's love is tight oh, i don't know about that sentence i don't love how it sounded either but i said it and there's no taking it back so anyway, <laughs> okay. meet this wizard dumbledore right and he wants to leave baby harry with his non-magical family but he doesn't want to be seen doing magic in the suburbs so what does he do he does some magic in the suburbs <laughs> he turns all the street lights into flying magic balls and yeah dude you know those neighborhood watch will be freaking oh, out you know, i think walking down the street normally might have drawn less attention than the magic flying light balls maybe so Dumbledore's going to explain <laughs> to these other wizards, Hagrid and Professor McGonagall, that Harry's going to be famous in the wizarding world, so it's better for him to grow up away from all that. I guess that's better. So he's like, let's just leave Harry in an abusive family for a decade and then kind of spring all this on him when he's a 10-year-old. Oh, and that's no. better than growing up rich and famous. That's what Dumbledore's going with. I so mean, then Harry's about to turn Dumbledore Dumbledore was all. He starts receiving letters from this magic school called Hogwarts where Dumbledore's the headmaster. Okay, but his family, they don't like like him they don't want him to read these letters why not because they hate him so much they want to keep him around i don't know that works <laughs> so the uncle keeps destroying these letters and they keep showing up but harry just can't get his hands on one long enough to read it well, well it's too bad they don't have a magical letter that just kind of shouts the message at you uh, uh, no actually they do have that those are called howlers oh sounds like maybe they just could have sent him one of those well we don't introduce them till a future movie so that's as good as them <laughs> not existing right now that yeah no. so anyway then oh no it doesn't exist right harry now that he's a wizard and takes him away from his family very exciting so hagrid brings him to get all the stuff he needs for school like he gets an owl named Hedwig oh Hedwig yeah he's super cute don't get too attached what? oh and also <laughs> don't get attached oh, to no, anything you're don't you're get attached to anything, anything. all of Anders and just destroys the place does he get in trouble no that just kind of seems like this guy's way of doing things just let children destroy his stuff until they find well, a can't he just go repair and fix it model. so anyway eventually Harry gets on the train to Hogwarts and he meets this kid Ron Weasley and he's got a rat on his crotch oh Oh my god. Oh, you yeah, know, it sounds gross, but in a later movie, we're going to find out that the rat is actually a middle aged man. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, that's so much worse. Oh, yeah, I guess that is worse. Anyway, turns out Ron's poor, so Harry buys all the candy on the cart for just the two of them. Okay, kind of a jerk move, actually. What if the other kids on the train wanted some candy? Well, that's too bad, because Harry's rich and rich oh, people yeah, what they want. That is true, yeah. And then they also meet this know it all Hermione, and they get to Hogwarts together. Oh, boy, and what happens? there. Well, this Draco Malfoy kid wants to be Harry's friend, but he's super mean to Ron, so Harry's like, uh -huh, no thank you. Oh, okay, that's a nice move. Yeah, so he chooses to be friends with Ron instead, who's so mean to Hermione that she cries in a bathroom. <laughs> oh my god. So then all the <laughs> get sorted into these four houses, one of which is just for the evil kids. Why would they yeah, have it's, that? And it's then true. I'm sorry, kids. it's true. Wow, so what kind of stuff are they gonna do? Oh, just all kinds of life-threatening things. Oh, very dangerous. But I bet you that's where the Majority Christmas. of everyone in uh, Hogwarts Christ. legacy, yeah, even whatever, ends up there. <laughs> are things they learn as no comments. Turns out the wizarding world developed the same religious practices as non-magical people. Huh. So anyway, throughout the movie, they start suspecting that this evil-looking Professor Snape is after this <laughs> magical stone. How oh, is it magical? Oh, this freaking thing can make you immortal. And they see Snape doing kind of oh, sketchy yeah. things, so they think he wants to bring Voldemort back to life. But kind of sketchy stuff. Like at a certain point, it seems like he's trying to make Harry fall off his flying broomstick so yeah. Hermione sets him on fire <laughs> holy she just Damn. straight up murders a guy not just like his robe it's okay oh okay I mean, but at the end she of the is movie, a kid we're gonna find out it was actually this 
Professor Quirrell guy who was trying to jinx the broom and the fire made him lose his eye contact. Why didn't he just restart the jinxing after the fire was out? I don't know. Fair he got enough. So eventually freaked they out. find he out that distracted. the stone yeah. is actually in Hogwarts and a bunch of professors put spells to try to keep it safe. Okay. And so Harry and Ron and Hermione, they decide they need to stop Snape from getting it. So what are some of these challenges? Well, the first one is a giant three-headed dog that you need to get past to get into this little trap door in this little room. They kept the dog locked in a room for a full year? That's, that's kind of messed up. They're no, the villains. Not. Oh, okay. And then there are going to be a couple more, like a giant chess game where you have to sit on the pieces and you get attacked. Oh. Yeah, and so Ron falls from like three feet in the air and then he's, you know, just kind of a big drama queen about it. Very <laughs> dramatic. So now Hermione <laughs> has to help Ron and Harry carries on by himself. And how does that go? Well, he ends up finding Professor Quirrell standing in front of this mirror trying to figure out how to get the stone out of it. Uh I'm Happy Kelly, oh, and I'd no. like to show you how to use Premiere Pro to make super cool TikTok videos. Oh, okay. And then he reveals that he's actually had the Dark Lord Voldemort's face under his turban you know, this whole time. Not much. Oh. Must have been very awkward for him to poop all year. <laughs> yeah, no, can't imagine those were pleasant for either of them. You think he ever went to scratch his head and accidentally poked the dark hole <laughs> in the eye? You know, maybe. You think they said good night to each other before bed every night? He probably suffocated. Yeah, suffocated? Yeah. Know, maybe let's not think about this too much. Oh, okay. Anyway, so then the stone magically appears in Harry's pocket because of the magic mirror. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. So now the <laughs> comes after him. Oh man, it's gonna be tough for him to defend himself against a full-grown man and the tiny face of a dead man. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an yeah, inconvenience. Oh really? Yeah, it turns out his mom's love is like super plot armor, so he turns Professor Quirrell <laughs> to dust just by touching him. Oh my god, he kills a teacher? He does, yeah. <laughs> so that's a happy turn of events. This I mean, to be fair, took they... this man's life very easily. Jeez. So then Dumbledore explains to Harry that this mirror had a spell on it where the stone would only transfer to somebody who wanted to find the stone but not use it. So that's why Professor Quirrell couldn't get it. Exactly. Wow. So all the other challenges were kind of unnecessary, huh? <laughs> ah. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> and arguably, Harry made the situation much more dangerous by showing up. The stone would have stayed in the mirror. It never would have been within Voldemort's that, uh, grasp. Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe. Well, we're going to play the moment as heroic, okay? Yeah, okay, I guess. So anyway, then it's the end of the year, and there's this thing called the House Cup, where, like, throughout the year, each oh, house no. gets points and loses points based on the stuff they do. Okay. And the good guy house, Gryffindor, is dead. The good guy house. The bad guy house, Slytherin, they win. Oh, well. You know, bummer. Yeah, but then Dumbledore, he's like, hey, everybody, shut the hell up, because Harry Potter <laughs> killed one of the teachers with his hands. Yeah. So he gives Harry and all his friends a bunch of points for killing that man. You oh, know, that's ending so that guy's funny. life being the last face he ever saw. This... I imagine this is phrased better in the book. Yeah, I think, probably. All right. Oh, and also Dumbledore Maybe. spoke with this guy, Nicholas Flamel, who was being kept alive by the stone, and he agreed to just die and let the stone be destroyed. Okay. Oh, yeah, the guy's been alive for like 600 years, so he's like, yeah, okay, destroy the stone. I've lived long enough. Probably should have <laughs> had that talk in the first place before storing the stone at Hogwarts and endangering all the students. <laughs> Maybe. So then Harry gets on yeah. the train to go home and waves like a normal person. <laughs> what are you talking about? The way he waves? It's perfectly normal. <laughs> Okay, I mean, yeah, all right. So then that's it. What do you think? Well, you know, it sounds like a pretty good time. What's this first movie called, anyway? Like, what's the full title? Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Oh, okay. And also Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, because that first one I said is kind of hard. Wait, what? <laughs> People can't say no, Philosopher. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> So, you have some new Harry Potter for me? Yes, oh, yeah, sir, let's I go. Do. So, the Dursleys have this very important business dinner, right? And Harry has to stop this wacky house elf from disrupting it. Oh. So this is like a Harry Potter sitcom spinoff? No, actually, it's a movie. Really? Yes, and, and it's Malfoy very serious. servant Dobby shows up because he wants to stop Harry from returning to Hogwarts. He says something bad is being planned. Oh, uh, sounds dangerous. It will be. So after Dobby <laughs> ruins this dinner, the Dursleys are sick of having Harry living in their house. So what do they do? Well, they make sure Harry can't leave their house. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, what? Sure. But then Harry gets That's rescued true. by the Weasley kids in a flying car, so he escapes. Oh, boy. Which is Time dope. For the Hogwarts 
Sports Express. All right, we'll actually see Dobby makes them miss the train, so they take the flying car to school and crash into the Whomping Willow. What's the Whomping Willow? It's just tree this tree they have at the school people. where if you get too close to it, it bludgeons you to death. <laughs> oh, God, why would they have that at a school? <laughs> well, in the next book we find out is to conceal a passageway for this werewolf to go transform. So put a spell or something. Isn't there a yeah, concealing yeah. spell? Yeah, like a... I mean, probably. Uh, it's cool. With tree All right, that it's might cool. punch a child to death. Jeez. And then the car drives itself off into the forbidden forest, because I guess it has a mind of its own. Oh, it does. Yeah, well, wizards yeah. seem to have this casual, godlike power to spontaneously create <laughs> life. <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. a bunch of slugs. Malfoy yeah. makes a snake. Oh, that has massive moral implications. No, it doesn't. Oh, all right. So there's this new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, Gilderoy Lockhart, right? And what's his deal? Well, he's this super famous wizard who wrote a bunch of books about his encounters with dark creatures, except he's a fraud. He didn't do any of it. Why would a celebrity accept a job teaching things he doesn't know and risk being exposed? I don't know. Well, okay, then. Well, maybe so anyway, it pays really good. School year, or maybe he wanted to fluff up his ego a little bit. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah there's a good reason. Students and a cat and Hermione and a ghost. Oh, no. Yeah, so people are trying to figure out what it is, right? Wow, well, thank God they have those talking portraits all over the school. One of them must <laughs> yeah, to help us them. out. No. All right. So the only <laughs> the way, way to untangle these people is to make this potion using mandrakes, but they take a while to mature. And how are they planning on unpetrifying the ghost? Oh, off screen. Oh, perfect. So everybody's yeah. trying to figure yeah, out who's responsible all good. for this, you know? And people suspect Harry. How come? Oh, the whole school sees him during a silent night walk. You know when you walk with your whole school through the hallway silently together? <laughs> That's not a thing. It might be. And then also Hagrid gets blamed, so he gets sent to Azkaban prison. Oh, no. Yeah, so he tells Harry and Ron to to go talk to a giant spider in the forest. Seems dangerous, kind of messed up that he it sent them there. It is dangerous. Yeah, so this giant spider's like, yeah, Hagrid's innocent. I guess that's why he sent you to clear his own name. Anyway, now my children will yeah. be <laughs> oh, man, it's gonna be hard to get out of that situation. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Fairly <laughs> easy. Oh, oh come on. Really? Yeah, because out of nowhere, that magic car shows up because it can I think mean, for itself, yeah. which that is a horrifying thought, I guess. It said hello. Machina ex machina, as the Italians would say. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. So eventually, we find out that Ginny is actually that. being Manipulated by the diary of Voldemort. He's the bad guy. Yeah, and so she's the one who opened this chamber of secrets place in the school and set the monster free. And so what is this monster? It's called a basilisk, and it's this massive snake that was moving through the I mean, the it did look pretty sick. Jeez, how big no, are yeah, that thing looks cool. These wizard kids eat a lot, sir. Food just kind of appears. That's a good point. <laughs> and if you make eye contact with a basilisk, you die. But everybody sighed indirectly, so they were petrified. And the giant snake doesn't eat anyone afterwards? No, it just spooked. <laughs> Them, nah. back to the <laughs> yeah, shot. it gets it's all the, the food. How did they figure all this out? Well, one day Ginny had decided to dispose of the diary by throwing it in a toilet. That is how people get rid of books. Then Harry found the book, so obviously he kept it. <laughs> Can't blame him. Toilet books are tight. And so Harry DMs with Voldemort for a little Ew. bit because his 16-year-old self is preserved in the diary. A little chat sesh with Voldy, sure. So eventually Harry and Ron head into the <laughs> Chamber so of Secrets with Professor Lockhart because Ginny's been taken down there. Oh, that seems like the worst teacher they could bring. Yeah, and he is because he tries to erase their memories to take credit for all their bravery. Does it work? No, because he uses Ron's broken wand, so it backfires and he erases his own memory. Which is perfect, because now Ron can stay back with him. Why is that a good thing? Oh, because Harry's the Harry's main character. Harry's gotta do of it. Of course. Cool <laughs> we gotta go one v one That is true. So then Harry meets Voldemort, except he used to go by Tom Riddle, and he shows Harry some cool wordplay he did to come up with his name. <laughs> oh, two guys in robes doing wordplay in a basement. It's kind of crazy that this is gonna make like a billion dollars. <laughs> well, it does get a little more exciting, sir, because Harry it. has to fight a basilisk now. Oh, man, it's going to be hard to stand a chance against that thing. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> okay. Oh, really? Yeah, because Dumbledore's Phoenix Fox shows up out of nowhere, and he pokes the basilisk's eyes out and gives Harry a sword and heals yeah, him when he gets hurt. Yeah, special sword. This yeah. Maybe he Fox in the Chamber of Secrets. Seems like he's taking care of pretty much everything. <laughs> Harry does a couple things. He stabs the snake, and he stabs a book. A very stabby wizard. What else does he stab? <laughs> That's it for the stabbing pal. And so Dumbledore is so happy that Harry killed the snake and stabbed a book that he cancels everybody's exams. Oh, uh, this guy doesn't give a crap about their education. Yeah. Not really, not sick. <laughs> oh, and also we find out that Draco's father, Lucius, is the one who slipped the diary to Ginny at the beginning of the movie. Very sneaky. It is. And then Harry tricks Lucius into setting his house elf Dobby free. How does he manage that? Well, see, the only way to set a house elf free is to present it with clothing, clothing. right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Harry hides a sock inside a book that he gives to Lucius, so when he gives it to Dobby, he technically gives him clothing. <laughs> oh, so it's literally if you accidentally hand them clothes, 
they're free. <laughs> yeah, what if you ask him to fold the clothes? It makes for a super complicated laundry day. Yeah, I guess it does. So then Lucius is so mad, he tries to murder Harry, but Dobby jumps in and saves the day. Oh, is he just going to use a death curse on an 11-year-old on school grounds? Yes. This guy's hardcore. He is, but Dobby uh, saves the day. So it's that's the nice. only thing so the actor Dobby could remember. Why specifically warning Harry at the beginning of the movie? It seems like a bunch of people were in danger. Well, Harry's the main character. That's a good point. Wow, well, I kind of like this Dobby character. I know, right? But don't get too attached to Don't get too attached to any, attached any of them. Don't. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a new Harry Potter for a minute? Yes, sir. Oh my okay. gosh. So Harry Potter's at the Dursleys, right? The abusive family that everybody knows. That he's really still stuck with no, somehow. Still here. The one. So he's in bed doing that Lumo spell over and over again. Isn't him doing magic outside of Hogwarts like forbidden? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Technically but who not cares? Super important it's, it's detail, Harry. Though. But it's okay. Lumo. So then this terrible aunt comes over and she's just the worst. I mean, she's super mean and he accidentally turns her into a big floaty <laughs> balloon. Oh, very satisfying. Yeah, but now Harry's got to go on the run because he did magic outside of school. You can't do that. But then he just started the movie. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I did do that and I, whoops. Whoopsie, you silly goose. You goose. That's silly. So anyway, then he takes this <laughs> wacky goose. convenience bus that wizards have and heads to the leaky cauldron. And what happens there? Well, the minister of magic is like, oh, yeah, don't worry about the magic stuff. That's fine. Okay. So Harry gets some of his school books, oh, good. one of We're which is a book you. of yeah. monsters that's an actual monster. Like, it tries to bite you and it tears I mean, its own pages. It's, it's a really cool that? thing. I mean, sir, I feel like it's clear at this point that wizards have like zero consumer protection laws. That's a good point. <laughs> so then Harry goes back to Hogwarts, which this year has completely changed geographically. What? So then Dumbledore gives his annual <laughs> I never speech, noticed you know, that. About all the different ways the kids might die this year. Oh, this guy freaking hates when kids are safe. He really does. <laughs> so what does Voldemort have in store this year? Nothing. Oh, yeah, playing it laid back, giving everyone a year off this year. Of <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, the threat this year is this dangerous escaped convict, Sirius Black. Oh, yeah, and apparently he wants to kill Harry Potter, and he's the one who ratted out his parents to Voldemort. Sounds like it's pretty serious. He's yeah. decent looking, sure. That's not, never mind. <laughs> okay, so I guess they give Harry some extra security. He's decent huh? They don't, no. Oh, they don't. No, instead they have a bunch of these horrible creatures called Dementors all over the place, and they'll yeah. suck out your soul <laughs> if you get too close, so they're yeah. very Cause collateral. <laughs> they yeah, might exactly. Enjoy. Maybe being killed, they bring in a bunch of things that might kill students. That's what they're going with. Yeah. Interesting strategy. Yeah, they so got the really year, good security in the Wizarding you know, World. The new defense yeah, against the know, dark Hogwarts is like that. This guy, Professor Lupin. And what's his deal? Well, he shows them this creature called the Boggart that takes the form of whatever you're the most afraid of. Oh. Yeah, so when he looks at it, he sees a full moon because he's secretly a werewolf. The guy with the name that basically means wolf in Latin is a werewolf. Yes. A real wacky coinkadink of a last name on that one, sir. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Coinkadink. Wow. So the trick is to get the into imagining your fear doing something really funny. That is funny. Like how it usually is, though. Yeah, of course. It shows. So she thinks of a giant unblinking clown. <laughs> oh, my gosh. gosh. That better. Yeah, I don't know about that one, to be honest. Jeez. So anyway, eventually, the Weasley twins give Harry this little map called the Marauder's Map. And what does that do? This is freaking map of Hogwarts that shows you where everybody is. Okay. And then one day, Harry sees this name on the map, Peter Pettigrew. But Lupin's like, that's impossible. That guy's dead. Oh, very much mysterious. Yeah, very mysterious. And later a dog drags Ron under a tree. Is that related to the plot or is that just the thing that happens to Ron? Both, technically. <laughs> Harry and Hermione have to save him, but that tree is the Whomping Willow. Okay, now, is that that Willow? It's that the thing that blesses it people. Was. Yeah, I thought so. So the Whomping Willow freaking We're picks it up off. Hermione, <laughs> sends her spinning around in the air like Ooh. crazy. Uh -oh. And then as she's whizzing on by, she picks up Harry with one arm and drags him along too. I feel like that would snap her arm. Yeah, no, she's got like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. let's not talk about that. Don't worry that. about it. Okay, <laughs> and then she launches him into this hole under the tree thanks to the superhuman coordination she also has in this scene. Oh, tree holes are tight. Gross, sir. So then they end up in this house. <laughs> Gross. So black is there. Oh, no. <laughs> and then Lupin pops out, too, and turns out they're buddies. Oh. And they're going to talk yeah. super vaguely for a while to make it seem like they're evil and like they're going to kill Harry, but they're not. Oh, characters love speaking <laughs> vaguely right before Big Twist. They sure yep. do, sir. So so then it turns out that Ron's rat, who was always on his lap, was a full-grown man named Peter Pettigrew, a.k.a. Wormtail, this whole time. Uh, that has just the most unsettling implications. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. And Fred and George never wondered why on the Marauders map there was a guy named Peter in bed with their brother every night. None of that oh, 
Wormtail's strategy that would be a little sus. The Weasleys for 12 years in the hopes that the kids would become friends with important wizards? Sure seems that way. And what was Sirius's strategy? Just break into a heavily guarded school and kill the one guy who could clear his name? Sure seems that way. <laughs> well, okay then. Well, what happens to be fair, he was in prison. That makes a little more sense. Lupin forgot yeah. to take his full moon potion on a full moon, so he turns into a werewolf. The werewolf whose biggest fear is full moons forgot about the full moon? <laughs> he does. And then also some dementors start attacking, so Harry and Sirius are both like about to die. Oh man, it's gonna be tough to get out of that situation. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. <laughs> no. Oh, really? Yeah, see, they use Hermione's time machine to go help Wait, themselves. Wait, talk about moral Hermione implications. Has a time machine? Yeah, she was entrusted with this time turner device so she could double up on her classes and learn more. Why would they trust her? She's broken multiple rules. Time multiple magic times over the past for classes. Years. Yeah, but see, she's book smart, so they give her the ability to, you know, mess with time itself. <laughs> well, okay, well, that's gonna be a super helpful device moving forward. No, 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 never again. Okay, but yeah, we're getting rid of that. So all that works out well, but that's Sirius true. I forgot captured, about now that. Now that Wormtail's gone, there's nobody to prove his innocence. Can they maybe use a truth potion to prove what happened, or do nah, that thing where they pull memories out of people's heads? It is uh, well, The thing about that, shut up about that. <laughs> oh, that's super mean. So they go break Sirius out of the little cell he's being kept in and set him free. Aren't there any guards or anything? No. See, they capture one of the most wanted criminals in the Wizarding World and leave him in a little unguarded cell. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, it worked out fantastic. So how does the movie end? <laughs> well, Harry gets a very nice new broom and then we freeze frame on him enjoying it. <laughs> what? Yeah, just an aggressive freeze frame on him enjoying it. That's, <laughs> that's aggressive. So the I motion. Think sure is, sir. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a great movie. Thank you. One more thing, though. Unfortunately, we're going to have to find somebody new to play Dumbledore since Richard Harris passed away. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you have anyone in mind? Well, I don't know, but it's got to be someone who could bring his mysterious nature and great wisdom to the screen, you know? That's a good point, yeah. And that'll have to do until one day we cash in and give people the young, hot Dumbledore they really want. <laughs> I didn't even want to see that. I don't see that happening. Uh, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have that... Oh, oh no, we're gonna need to do New Harry Potter movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Wow, so what's going on with the characters? Well, I'll tell you, sir. All the guy characters decided it's time to have long hair for a year. Uh, that okay, is... that's kind of random. A little bit. Is that the only thing going on this year, or...? Nope, there's more, actually. So Harry and Hermione and the Weasleys are gonna go to this thing called the Quidditch World Cup. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I always forget Arthur which Weasley's movies things happen in. His son, Cedric Diggory. How were we introduced to him? Just the normal way, you know? He suddenly drops out of a tree. <laughs> that's not normal, sir. <laughs> It is. So they head to the World Cup. And there are a ton For him, of it is. There, very cool. Wow, I can't wait to see what the Quidditch World Cup is like. Right? Sounds super cool, doesn't it? So then we're gonna cut to right after <laughs> it's all done, oh. and the event's gonna get yeah, attacked by some Yeah, it death does suck. And Harry's gonna get knocked unconscious. Oh no! Yeah, and so later he wakes up, and everything's been burned to the ground, and he's the last one there. Not a single person saw him there, and he wasn't affected by the fire or smoke. That's what we're going with. And then this dead <laughs> Harry Potter, yeah, main character, shows up and shoots a dark mark into the sky. Oh, very oh, ominous. Yeah. Anyway, so eventually Harry goes back to Hogwarts and Dumbledore gives his annual speech about all the ways the kids might die this year, <laughs> as is tradition. Hey, look, that's sure. every so assembly, in all honesty. This year, Hogwarts has True. been chosen to host something called the Triwizard Tournament. And what's that? It's this big competition between three wizarding schools, so a bunch of people from these two other schools come in and do little dances for some reason. <laughs> oh, that's fun. So you have a chance of being chosen, you need to be at least seven... If you're serious about your podcast. And if anybody's wondering, and I'm too cheap to buy YouTube Premium, yes. <laughs> Toby. Teen, and you need to put your name in something called the Goblet of Fire, and only oh, yeah. one wizard per school can be chosen. Okay. And once the three names are chosen, somehow there's a fourth name, and it's Harry Except Potter. For Harry of Potter. course. Are the other schools just gonna live at Hogwarts now? Yes. Even the ones that weren't chosen? Yeah, they're all just gonna kind of live there for a year. That's kind of weird. No, it's I mean, not. So then Dumbledore cool, runs but... up to Harry and shakes him like crazy and says, "Harry, <laughs> did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire?" Uh, that doesn't really sound like Dumbledore. Isn't he more calm and collected? Oh uh, yeah, that's a good. Point. Point. Well, I'm profoundly <laughs> angry inside all the time, so maybe I projected onto him a little bit. You maybe teach somebody about that. No! That's... All right. So anyway, this is a super dangerous tournament, and if you're chosen, you're magically the bound best explanation. To what does that mean? You have to do it. Right, but what happens if you don't do it? I don't know. I guess you die or something, right? That seems to be the implication. Why would this be a thing? Well, sir, they really want to know which school has the best wizard They take it so seriously. That's got to be on the table here. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's how it is, bro. Uh, yeah. Wizarding world. Out what these three events are going to be. 
how we should prepare. It's yeah, just a risky it's world. The mentor is going to drop out of a tree and make fun of him. Why is everyone up in trees? <laughs> so they can drop out of them at the starts of conversations. But so anyway, then this new teacher, <laughs> Mad Eye Moody, pops out and confronts Malfoy, turns him into a ferret. Why is he called Mad Eye Moody? Well, one of his eyes is magic and zooms in like a camera lens and goes, <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it magic? Why is it making mechanical lens noises? <laughs> Unclear. But anyway, Unclear. <laughs> 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 but anyway, Mad Eye Moody was actually that Barty Crouch Jr. guy the whole time taking polyjuice potion. Oh, very twisty. Extremely, sir. <laughs> so for the first event, Harry's gotta steal an egg from a dragon. Oh, boy. But this thing breaks loose from its chain and chases Harry around Which Hogwarts. Is... Wow, so I guess the teachers must intervene, huh? A dragon is loose on school grounds. Yeah. A dragon? Watch. That checks out, actually. That <laughs> seems on brand for them. And then he gets the egg. He's gotta go listen to it Yeah, at least they're consistent. True, to consistency. Look at his what? So then eventually, for the next competition, he's gotta go underwater for an extended period of time. Oh, how come? Well, because see, the organizers have kidnapped people that the champions care about. So, like, Ron and Hermione are there. There's the eight-year-old sister of one of them. <laughs> underwater. Get tied up underwater. So Harry saves the life of Ron, but also I the think they explained it safer, to be fair. But... Oh, wow. So obviously Dumbledore gives them some extra points for bravery, because he does that any chance he gets. Wait, so they just kidnapped some kids against their will and put them underwater, and we're gonna let them drown if the champions fail the task. Yeah, that little girl would have drowned to death if Harry <laughs> hadn't saved her. No! Like it I said, is, they gotta they know were which kidding. young wizard is the best young wizard. So yeah, she would have drowned. This... I, wizards are not okay people, I think. Anyway, everybody in the stands goes nuts, obviously. What were they watching the whole time? Just the lake? Yeah, they were staring at a lake for an hour, so that's a fun activity to watch. <laughs> staring at lakes that's how tight. it be at the yeah, sports games, though. What's the next though. event gonna be? They're all gonna stare at some hedges. Thrilling. Yeah, the oh, that's true. I never thought about that. hedge maze to find the Triwizard Cup, but it grabs you with its plantiness, so it's very scary. <laughs> Man, Hogwarts just has the most violent vegetation. It sure yeah. does, sir. So then Harry and Cedric grab the cup at the exact same time, but it was a portkey and it teleports them to a oh, graveyard. Yeah. Spooky. Very spooky, sir. And then Wormtail's gonna pop out with a little baby Voldemort and kill Cedric. Is... You know, I'm actually shocked it's taken four years <laughs> for a kid to die. So it turns out <laughs> Barty Crouch Jr. planned this whole thing because they needed a bit of Harry's blood to bring Voldemort back to life. He taught a class for a full year to get a couple of drops of blood. Yeah, and put his name in the Goblet of Fire and kind of laid out the path for him I, to be the one to He's got a flair for drama. He could okay, have tricked him with a needle and then ran away. Yeah, but that makes it very, very <laughs> ran away. So he's gonna go with this overly complicated plan. That makes it more exciting. I guess. So anyway, then Voldemort gets a full body again. Uh-oh. Yeah, except for the nose. That doesn't grow in for some reason. Maybe he's a late bloomer. Maybe it'll grow in later. It won't. So now Voldemort <laughs> wants to kill Harry. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to survive he an encounter with the lines. Dark Lord. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Uh oh, really? Yeah, because he, he gets some help from a couple of friendly ghosts. Oh. Do these ones try to look at his wiener? No, these ghosts are his parents' ghosts. And also Cedric is a ghost, and he's pretty chill about being dead. To be Her fair, they don't explain it in the movie. So then Harry's able to grab the port key and go back to the tournament. Well, good thing it was a two-way port key. It worked out pretty well, sir. So then everybody's in shock that Cedric is dead, and Harry takes off with Mad-Eye Moody. And does Harry figure out that it's not the real Mad-Eye Moody? He does. And then this guy recaps the entire school year for so long that Dumbledore and some teachers have time to bust in and help Harry. Oh, great. Yeah, and then coincidentally, at that very moment, his polyjuice potion runs out. Fantastic Through dramatic real. potion oh, yeah. timing. Definitely. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a great Harry Potter movie, you know. Thank you. I just feel kind of bad for whatever actor's gonna play that Cedric Diggory character, you know? In all probability, that'll be the biggest role of his career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Poor you were guy. saying? <laughs> oh, man. It's great. It this is. is the first part, but it's just great. I, I appreciate Especially since I feel like the movies were a little bit lacking compared to the books mm -hmm. as far as like explaining any sort of plot holes or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, I don't want to just rag on the movies. Like there are definitely massive, massive plot holes in the book. That too. is true. <laughs> so, you know, I feel like, you know, we are going on the on the movies. So he is, you know, bringing up points for the movie, I guess. Sure. sure, yeah, sure but sure. it's it's funny. You know? It's fun. And it's it's all a good fun. It's, it's like, Listen, look, you could still, just because it has a plot hole doesn't mean you can't love it. It's like, I still think actually Harry Potter, especially the books, are really well done. Yeah. And it's enjoyable and great. And as a kid, you're like, oh, this is the coolest school ever. And like, sure, if you want to be super realistic, there's 
some like, oh, this is the unsafest school of all time. But it's yeah. like, who cares, dude? It's fun and it's a cool idea and it gets your imagination going. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's like they're, you know, a source of entertainment. They're they're going to be, you know, a little more dangerous, a little sure. more adventure filled, sure. you know, and, and plot holes. Hell, like it's it's just going to happen. Of you know, I, I don't know what to say. Like it just happened. You it's, know? It, yeah, so. for sure. Yeah. So, um, like I said, we're doing this in two parts because it's a really long compilation. But um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for joining us for watching. Feel free to let us know what other pitch meetings you guys want us to watch here on the channel. And uh, if you stick around, we will see you all in the next video. Thank you.